Thanks, Sebastian. Um, there have been have like a lot of diffusion talks every like I've seen like at least four talks on diffusion and there are more coming. So pretty much the rage. And unless you're living under a rock, you would know about stable diffusion or diffusion or generative art like text to image art. Um, so obviously this image is also AI generated. This one is from Mid Journey, uh, which is my favorite right now. Uh, Dali sucks. Um, and yeah, and I, I kind of don't like cats, but still I generated cats. Um, but yeah, um, there's a lot of um, lion on the moon uh, uh, with an astronaut on Mars. They're walking, all the cool stuff that I wanted to generate. Um, some, somewhere there's some problems with the legs, with the hands. Uh, that's like a core problem with diffusion models. They are not really good with hands or legs. Um, sometimes also with hair, they are really not that um, perfect. Um, so as you've seen like over the past, like let's say from April last year, like when DALI 2 came, by, everything kind of boomed up, like everybody wanted to get into that. And as mid-journey, stable diffusion, so stability AI, runway ML, a lot of people wanted to like get into this bandwagon, but to get into making stories, uh, to making films. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have been on Twitter, if everybody has been on Twitter, there's like movies generated from Runway ML or some other folks uh, who do like nice video editing. Uh, so it's not exactly uh, stable diffusion or any diffusion model. There's a lot of post-processing that have happened with that. Um, and I want to show you like where we are and how far we are from the goal of generating stories, right? So when I was a kid, I had trouble understanding visually. Like I couldn't make sense, how is this math? How is this uh, uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors working or whatever? Like it was hard for me. And this is stable diffusion UI, the web UI. And you can just uh, type in some text and it'll give you some image, some cat. So it gives the cat, it's a, it's a cute cat, can't complain. Um, but what do we actually want? What I actually want? So to be able to generate like visual videos, like animated videos, mainly for kids or mainly for understanding any content, right? Uh, in the style of let's say Khan Academy or uh, if you have seen three blue, one brown videos, right? So I want to give a script, a YouTube script or anything generated by GPT and I want to generate a visual uh, representation of that. But right now the cat is sad. There's nothing really happening yet. So I want like, it to in interpret what's happening here and to generate like contextualized like, sequence of images which would, all, uh, which would alternately become a video, uh, eventually will become a video. Um, so, this is where we are at. Uh, it's mainly like a lot of researchers uh, doing things separately, uh, and then they'll have their GitHub uh, uh, repo, and some people would contribute, but not at a large scale. And I have not seen like a single repo which is like heavily maintained or like contributed. I, I saw one which was like four months was the last contribution, not active contribution. And I feel like if we want to go to story generation, like anything with story generation, we have to actively contribute to that, uh, to the repositories that are already there, uh, be it stable diffusion or it be anything uh, on the internet, like control net and many models related to diffusion. Cool, so I'm gonna show you a video, what Runway ML Gen 2 is doing. And this is the closest we are right now, a lion living, walking in a rainstorm, all that. Um, so we're getting there, but we are really, really far because 
it's, it's able to generate just like one uh, sentence, but not like a big, big query if you give them. There won't be a story. So if you give them another sentence, they would perform poorly, right? Um, so this is one of the examples. So what I want to do is like get stories blend in with different styles of teaching or maybe make it learn from YouTube videos and perform the same thing. Like, uh, yeah, I want to like have Khan Academy kind of teaching from the chat GPT generated prompt that you want. So this is one. And now I want to touch on the history of how this came about. Like a lot, lot of people do not know how uh, diffusion came in place and uh, there were GANs and there was a lot of stuff happening. Uh, even at Google, they were trying to get the story generated AI long, long back. Um, so yeah. So this is kind of a flowchart. So there's some energy-based models which you guys don't need to worry about. Uh, there's GANs, that VAEs, variational autoencoders. DALI came out in 2021. DALI two, very very different from DALI one. Uh, there's Glide that imagine everybody is there. But even before that, there was a lot of stuff happening. So this was, I would say, kind of the first uh, text-to-image thing, like big paper, I think it was 2012 or something. Um, so you can see it was just the starting phase. It's not perfect. Like the beaks are not really good. The eyes are not there. There's so many problems with that. Uh, this is where we started. And yeah, uh, kind of Dali just wanted to show how uh, uh, inaccurate Dali is with the uh, hands and the face. Uh, you can see the faces uh, going off. But now we can actually do this prompt engineering uh, and do like painted by William uh, Adolf and full length character design with baggy jeans, all that. So this is possible. But the ultimate goal is text to video, not text to image. So it performs poorly when it comes to text to video. But let me show you first what's happening currently. Uh, this is funny enough. It's uh, actually a sketch of a serial killer. Uh, yeah. And uh, it was given to ControlNet, uh, which basically takes your sketches and converts into nice looking images, and also with Protogen, which makes like this uh, really good looking model like um, images. And this guy is uh, Stealthy, the time traveler. He goes uh, and travels back in time and uh, takes photos with Indiana Jones uh, characters and uh, also with like Nelson Mandela and many other people. He just goes back in time. Uh, but he, he's not doing it directly through stable diffusion. There's no like straight way. There's a lot of Photoshop, there's a lot of uh, in-painting that he does. Um, it takes hours for him to make just this single image. So let alone thinking about videos, right? Now, GANs. Uh, probably many people would have, would have heard of this website called This Person Does Not Exist. And this was the most like earliest versions of GANs being perfect in faces. And there are newer versions of it. And you could basically uh, never recognize if it's real or fake, right? And that's the concept behind GANs. So with GANs, you have some real world images. And you're trying to get to uh, an image which is as close to the real world. And there's like a discriminator who's like a police. And he tries to catch the thief who's trying to generate the fake ones. And you're trying to get back at each other, back and forth, and until, you, uh, until the discriminator is no longer able to identify if it's a fake or a real, right? So that's the concept behind GANs. And this was another paper which did much better than the previous one. And this used something like MS Coco dataset, if anybody has heard of that. And that was the earliest known data set was available before uh, Clip and everything came, up, came about. Um, so story GANs. This was one of the highlight paper. I think this was from Google. 
and they tried the first variant of generating stories through an animated characters, and this is also from Coco, if I'm not wrong. And so here, the Pororo and Krong are fishing together, and there's bucket and fishing rod. So they're trying to get the main objects in the picture, and then they're trying to identify what else is there. So Pororo and Krong are fishing. Krong is looking at the bucket, so it's, he's looking at the bucket. Here, it's fishing together. Uh, Krong and are fishing, and has a fish with a fishing rod. So you can see a fishing rod. That was something really interesting, and uh, that this this paper actually got me interested into like generating uh, stories and videos. Um, so yeah, this was one of them. And then came VQ Gan clip, uh, which many people like on Discord, Reddit, they were all trying this uh, to get it as close to Dali, um, because that was the benchmark, like to get this uh, model particular model, which is a variant of GAN, it's a vector quantized GAN, uh, with CLIP. Uh, I'll uh, talk about CLIP just in a second. And this came very, very close to what we wanted with images. I'm, I'm going to come to videos. Uh, so yeah, this is just the images. It came nicely, a sketch of a 3D printer by Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. And then we started with DALI and everybody lost their minds. And so here is a stack of three cubes, a red cube on the top, um, and it's able to like generate all of this very nicely. Uh, maybe not somewhere here or here, uh, but it, it basically um, changed the way we looked at generative uh, text to image. And we were able to generate like this. It's like a morphing animated videos. And it's been all over Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter. Um, I'm always searching for what's new. And this is morphing. So it's like blueberry spaghetti and strawberry spaghetti. <laughs> and there's code for it. It's very, very small code, not much lines. You can test it out, this morphing stuff. There's outpainting, so you can see like multiple images that are stitched together and forms like a beautiful uh, art. Um, so, so many features of diffusion. There's in painting, so here there's a person, let's say they have a mask, and then the, the diffusion process is generating a smile and maybe some angry, maybe sad. So that's a process of that. There's paranomical rendering. I'm showing you all the cool stuff here. So they, they've generated like a big city inside itself and you can just do this. I think just today, I think six hours ago I was active on Twitter, uh, they made like text to 3D models and you could basically zoom in, zoom out of that um, yeah, I don't know who it was, but I'm, I'm going to find out. Uh, who? Oh. And it's not just images. So Meta, I, I made the uh, baby slot with an orange knitted hat trying to figure out a laptop. And there, this was like very, very detailed with, with like the reflection in the eyes. Um, I, I really loved it. Uh, this is all old stuff. Uh, then obviously Google was not gonna be left behind. Uh, so they made this drone flying through a restaurant on a dystopian planet, right? So um, Imagine tried to do better than DALI in terms of uh, generating images with subtitles, with like if you wanted memes uh, or something. Uh, I'm gonna show you that as well. And maybe like Christopher Nolan style, uh, I don't know, Oppenheimer style uh, uh, background songs. Is that? Okay, no sound. Cool. But yeah, pretty good. Like, you, this is a start, right? When you make your own movies with diffusion. Um, so, how does it all work? Yeah, so we're going to start with clip. 
Now, clip is just a embedding of text and images. So you have a bunch of images, you have a bunch of text, combine them together, you get like a nice table with text descriptions, and yeah, so you basically have some images, and you try to get what is it in the images, right? You cannot do, uh, understand what is there in the image. So there's a text encoder, and there's an image encoder and you basically match them. And now why is clip powerful? Because combined with diffusion and uh, the diffusion process, there's two processes in diffusion. Uh, I think M M Michael also talked about previously, but uh, there's a forward diffusion where you're adding noise to an image. So here's the dog, you're adding noise gradually, gradually, gradually. And there's the reverse diffusion where you're removing the noise gradually in the reverse way, but conditioned on the image which you provide in like clip, like whatever in the prompt is there. So you want to get closer to the prompt and use clip together with this, so you get nice looking images and you learn like a representation of generating an image when you go backwards. And some people have figured out um, doing like uh, illuminating the photos in the dark uh, based on this process because it, it does something to your images when you go backward denoise you can actually get nice images but it's not really fast so it doesn't work well uh, and this is how you can easily do your own diffusion model um, it's very easy uh, it's not using any uh, pre-trained uh, model is just like your own images in your diffusion. There's some Gaussian noise, so there's Gaussian diffusion. There's a unit, which is an autoencoder. So, yeah, so there is a lot of stuff happening here. And there's some learning rate, uh, all machine learning stuff. You have batch size, 32. Uh, all of this depends on how powerful your system is and how much you do your prompt engineering and what you really want. Uh, but these are all the hyperparameters that you should tune. And it's easier to train here and you'll get some sample images after a lot of training. Um, I've been told, and from experimentation, the time step is mainly around 200. Uh, it, it gives like really nice images around that time. So that's why sometimes it takes uh, a huge amount of time to train all of this. And you can do it if you're a Keras lover. Um, um, I, I'm not, I'm a PyTorch lover. Um, so you can import Keras and you can do stable diffusion. And then you can just have this method, stable diffusion, text to image, take a prompt, and then you can generate and show this. You get some art nicely. And uh, nowadays there's like one click collab notebooks. So you can just go on that and just run that one line, and you have the Gradio or the uh, Stable Diffusion web UI ready for you to work with. Um, cool. And so from coming to one sentence to multiple sentences now, so you have like a Ferris wheel and a lake next to the Ferris wheel and buildings next to the lake. So this all conjunction is happening here, and it helps to create more dynamic images which you would like rather than to explain, because it's not like chat GPT that you can explain and tell them, don't do this, don't do that. It's, you have to kind of mention in this way. So this is one of the uh, papers that the lab had come with. And yeah, can you guys, uh, sorry, can everybody, uh, every, everyone recognize what's in this image? It's like a robot uh, building like uh, buildings in Minecraft, uh, one of the research that I'm working on, uh, so that they can make structures. And this is Europython, uh, pretty uh, not nice at all. And you see the text, very wobbly. Uh, I don't like this. Um, yeah, that, that's why Dali sucks. Uh, sorry, uh, if anybody from OpenAI is here. I hope not. And what about memes? They're not really good at memes. Or they are. This one is pretty nice with Donald Trump. Um, and this one, you can see there's some problems with the hands again. 
Um, and the problem with the hands is the data set, because the data set that is trained, uh, it doesn't have like specific images of hands, like big images. All it sees is just the patterns and the edges and the blobs somewhere here and there. So it tries to get there. That's why the problem with hands is like, doesn't understand what a hand make is. It understands the fingers. Awesome. Cool. And yeah, so the text is pretty bad, but it tries to generate a comic. Cool. And in the uh, process of uh, generating uh, the prompts, uh, generating the images from the prompts, it tried to make its own language. And when you put this thing back into the prompt, it would give you these images. So it has its own secret language. Yeah. So you, you say this, wah, whatever. <laughs> and you get this back, which is very close to what f the fishes are, uh, or whatever that is. And so what Party did is they trained on uh, a different subset, and they had like different parameters. You know, all these large language models and all, everybody has billion parameters, a lot of, so even they trained on something else, but specifically on understanding how to generate text properly. And they have welcome friends. Cool. And then control net versus advertisement. This is actually a friend from, uh, a sketch from my friend, and I generated this Coca-Cola advertisement using control net which is also one diffusion model. Cool. And what I wanted to highlight about it is like, with this sketch, it generates so many variants of advertisement that I could actually sell it to Coca-Cola. And this is on my own images, and Dream Booth is a model uh, that has been there for some time, and people are monetizing on it pretty heavily. There are a lot of startups which are doing this. Uh, this is basically me, but on 10 images. Uh, what the online websites they do is like take 15 images and so many. Um, yeah, it took a long time to train this. It's a custom pre-trained model uh, on Dream Booth with control net uh, in stable diffusion. Yeah. So, and there's room GPT. There's original room and there's a generated room. This is also control net. And I think Control Net is taking over like all the creative aspects uh, which was missing in like stable diffusion. Um, yeah, so generated room, it's pretty good now. Um, yeah. So where are we right now? I want to highlight again, we are here, we are still here, but this is the closest we are right now. If I want to play again. So we want to get more on this, like not just single videos, two seconds, low resolution. We want one minute, two minute videos with context in the images or context in the videos so that it's coherent and you can understand what's happening like a movie. And what we want is this, right? We really want this, any random and fully visualized story. So we are here, but we want to be here. So that's pretty much what I want to be there at. And all right, thanks. Thanks, that was pretty much it. I do have some extras, but I was saving it for, I don't know. But there's questions. Thank you very much. Great talk. Uh, if anyone has questions, just please come to the microphone. Stand in line. We, we have five minutes for questions. Yeah, thanks for the great talk. Um, it looks, uh, looks very cool. Um, uh, we, yeah, we, we were, you were also talking about like uh, longer videos, uh, maybe longer movies. Uh, like one field that I haven't really heard about uh, in this talk is like, for example, the field of Netflix and, yeah. and these uh, providers. Do you think there's like a future for uh, yeah, these streaming providers with, or like, is there a future for this AI-generated uh, content for streaming uh, providers? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I think like for everybody, like uh, at least for content creators, mainly for Instagram creators, YouTube creators, TikTok creators, and I think Netflix and they are going to be the first to ha like uh, be on this. Obviously, Netflix machine learning engineers are not behind. They they know all of this already, and they they are also trying to solve it. But obviously, it's not open uh, open source from their side, right? So. I think like videos is a hard thing to do, uh, but it will be coming. Like everybody is there, right? So everybody wants like AI-generated movies. Like, yeah, like it's been in so many books and like, yeah, so many stuff. Yeah. Yeah, maybe at some point even uh, like. Uh uh, uh, generated on the fly, like I've had a bad uh, day at work, I want yeah. to share a full movie. And yeah, it's especially generating. for like uh, mental health, therapy, uh, there'll be like specialized content, personalized content on like uh, the way you feel and they'll make you videos that make you feel good, you know. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I had two questions, but I'll save one for the break. Yeah. Um, so maybe one step easier, uh, you're trying to generate movies, but Imagine you have like a starting image and you want to create like a slide, uh, like almost a comic, like you mentioned before, from that one image and then together they tell stages of a story, yeah. you know, like the script you showed, for example. Would that be easier? Would it be harder? And what tools would you use for this? Okay, so one problem with that is like, um, so you're talking about images like contextualized together, right? Like we, yeah, with a know, consistent style. Consistent obviously. style. So what like GANs have been trying, and there's Diffusion Story, I think paper all, already. They're also trying the same, but with LSTMs, which is like another neural network, to try and remember what the context is and understand, okay, this is what I want. And then maybe uh, stitch it uh, with clip that, okay, this is what happened previously. Now I need to generate something from this part. Uh, so it's pretty hard to generate the same content again, which would be like, because it's random processes many times. Mm -hmm. So you want to get closer to the previous image, right? So you, but it's pretty hard to do that. It's, would it be easier if you have a, had a highly specialized trained model in a consistent style already? Yeah, yeah, I think it would be good, but I have not seen any uh, so far. If you have seen, we can chat about it, yeah. Have not, thank you. Cool. So there's a 30 second AI generated beer commercial on YouTube. One, ah. have you seen that? And two, do you have any idea how it was made? Um, I have not seen that, but uh, uh, we can chat about it. I'll, I'll see the video and yeah, uh, but I'll, I'll, I think I've seen it somehow, but I just don't remember it. Uh, was it Heineken? Uh, okay, cool, yeah. Uh, hello, thank you for the talk. Uh, I just wanted to ask a similar question to the previous uh, question was like, I saw some uh, people who were able to like fine tune some model and then have some consistency in the images, right? Because when you are trying to create a story, it's a problem that like you create a dog and in the next picture is another dog. And yeah. so like it doesn't work. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, like, is it possible as of now, or is it the state of future that, like, you would be able to sort of have the same dog generated twice? Uh, so what they're doing is, I think, with control net, uh, they're trying to make um, with like a lot of images. First, they're trying to generate images, and then with control net, they're trying to basically sketch out the story in a in a way, and then they're trying to make video out of it. But it's not. Uh, very good. If I have it here, I think. Um, don't know if I have it here. Um, but I'll show you that. But that's the that's that's also not that really good. It's mainly on like frogs, and then frogs are doing something, <laughs> but it's not really showing that they're jumping or doing anything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the output will be consistent, but like, uh, I think like with images, it, it's a little different. Like it's not like consistent, I would say. H have you seen like, like? 
sorry, for any questions, please use the microphone because this is recorded. And we are running out of time, so I think Nilesh will be around. Please give him one more round of applause for the great talk.